Hello and welcome to Conversation with the, with the Socialist. I have um, Robin Brownfield, who is uh, a artist who recently, um, uh, I guess, uh, donated a uh, piece of art to uh, Mellon Hoffman's uh, auction. Uh, do you know how, did that, is that still going on or? No, uh, there is an apparent winner. We're still waiting for the winner to pay for the item because I still have it behind me. Oh, I see. Yes, it is. So, okay. Yes. Um, so uh, hopefully that will happen and, uh, you know, uh, um, everybody will be happy. Yeah. So how long have you been doing that? Mosaicing? Um, I would say I, I basically started in 2006. Okay. I, I haven't been doing it, I hadn't been doing it a lot till probably 2013. Oh, okay. Uh, because uh, when I did it before, I basically was just trying to put up a backsplash in my kitchen mm. and uh, trying to use odd resources on tiles because we didn't have a lot of money um, to try to put a backdrop on uh, you know behind the stove in my kitchen and it ended up being not just the, the backdrop behind the stove or the backsplash but also the sides of the uh, the cabinets the walls I have it all over the kitchen now so um, and that that took a process that was a project that was on and off for many years. Ah. Um, that's done. Uh, but I think I started seriously doing mosaic work in 2013. I had I had to stop teaching. I was a, a an adjunct sociology professor, and um, I got too sick to be able to work anymore. So I had applied for disability. And, you know, disability keeps you waiting and they deny you um, disability, uh, you know, payments and so forth. And so, you know, they dragged it out for almost three years. And so in that three years, I had no income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, I decided I'd use what I had on hand to um, keep myself occupied. And so I started uh, doing more mosaic artwork. Mm. So, uh, now, um, now, how much? Did, how much do one of those usually cost? These, uh, well, yeah. like these, I can tell you right now that the materials themselves, mm -hmm. just the materials without my work or anything on it, cost about one hundred and twenty-five. Okay. Because I'm you. I, I. This was not you know something I did with just scraps that I found all over you know in the trash or at thrift shops or whatever. Yeah. Uh, this is something I wanted to do that looked professionally done. Mm. So, and I've gotten to the point, you know, now I am on disability. Um, our um, financial situation is better than it was back then. So mm -hmm. I can afford to buy the supplies that I, I want for, um, you know, making the mosaics I do. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of um, portraits um, and, and well this one uh, if I were to just to give you an example I did a portrait of um, Angela Davis yeah and somebody bought it for $500 wow yeah so so use that as kind of a um, a means of measuring how much <laughs> yeah kind of like what the market value would be for one of those right yeah, yeah. right, right. Well, now yeah go ahead go ahead sorry go ahead <laughs> no i was going to say most of the things i've sold have been much cheaper than that hmm. but that one somebody really loved the portrait and wanted it and they could afford five hundred dollars for it so yeah. now uh does that uh how does that affect your uh disability um, 
it doesn't really. I'm, a, I'm allowed to earn $15,000 above my disability. Mm. Okay. With, without any penalty, and I don't earn nearly that, near that. Maybe, yeah, I wish. maybe 150, you know, or maybe, yeah. you know, and in that case it was 500, but I, I don't ever make nearly um, close to what, what the limit is before I, they, they take it away from me, <laughs> so. Uh, so uh, you said uh, that uh, you you had to quit your you had to quit what, what you're doing because you got sick. Uh, may I ask what, what, what you got sick with? Okay, I well aside from chronic migraines, which is something I told you about last week, um, I also have fibromyalgia, which is um, a result of another condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a connective tissue um, uh, disorder. Um, and I'm not quite sure where it, where it falls in terms of identification because I've seen it um, uh, as an autoimmune disease. Uh, I've also seen it as a, um, a musculoskeletal uh, condition. Um, but what happens is my connective tissue doesn't form properly and so like, my tendons and cartilage and so forth tend to tear very easily and they don't heal well and as a result over time i end up with in a lot of pain mm. on top of that um i have you know there are other things that happen you know that are more classified as fibromyalgia like i have uh uh which could also still be linked to the uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is uh, uh, my uh, nervous system is hypersensitive. Mm. And so I will sometimes feel like I've stuck my finger in uh, an electrical socket. And, you know, have you ever had that happen? I'm not stick, stuck your finger in an electrical socket, but uh, yeah, uh, touched definitely. a live wire. And that the, the, the yeah, yeah, but I feel like that all over my body. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, for hours oh. or weeks, you know, uh, depending on the, the situation. I had it, you know, um, I had problems with that, like the day uh, we were supposed to do this last week. Yeah. And on top of having a migraine, I just had pain all over and couldn't function. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, and uh, so I have days when I'm fine, uh, and typically when I was teaching, I would start off the semester well. Mm -hmm. By mid-semester, around this time, I would start falling apart. Uh, I'd start getting sick, and especially as the, the weather would change and get colder. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, I have... Um, bulging discs and uh, occasionally a disc ruptures in my neck yeah. and that typically happens in the cold weather uh -huh. um, and so I would have a lot of days where I would have to cancel my eight o'clock in the morning class which didn't make anybody happy I yeah. mean if, if I got them in time they were happy they didn't have to get out of bed but <laughs> if, if I didn't they were unhappy that I didn't show up and they did yeah. so <laughs> Ooh, yeah yeah. So I had to stop that because it was very difficult to be consistent about showing up to work. Um, and on, ironically, the thing I had to give up first was teaching online because that was more stress on my neck than anything. Yeah, I can only imagine as far as that part goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you did a... Um... You did a piece of art. No, I'm, I'm not even going to try to say uh, the kind of art. <laughs> I, just, I just can't form the words. <laughs> I just can't form the words right now. I have no teeth. So <laughs> I have like five teeth left and I'm, I'm waiting for the villa to go back to the dentist. But anyway, um, <laughs> so your piece of art, uh, how, how did you uh, get together with Madeline Hoffman at the Green Party in New Jersey? Uh, well, I was... I was involved with the Green Party to begin with, uh, well, starting after the election in 2016, mm. um, when um, the uh, nomination was obviously stolen from Bernie Sanders and a lot of people des decided to dem exit and go to the Green Party. I did that too. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I got involved. And uh, I think I'm, the first time I met Madeline was at a Green Party convention, I guess the next uh, couple of months later. I had heard about her, you know, for many years, and she was on uh, my husband's uh, friends list for quite a while. Uh, but I was glad to finally meet her. And we, uh, I mean, I feel like we get along really well. So <laughs> yeah, you seem like you both have the same type of personality. Yeah, yeah. And we, you know, we've hung out together. And she, I, I love her. She's fantastic. So yeah, I, I've, I've interviewed her. Oh, man, I think about two or three times. Mm -hmm. So far, she was my she was my first interview uh, as, uh, as I got to, uh, to Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, then I uh, interviewed her again uh, I, when we first when we first moved in where we're at now, like less than a month ago. But mm -hmm. I'm hoping to keep interviewing her and keep interviewing other Green Party members. Uh, I think I've interviewed a total of man, it feels like 15 to 20, but it could be like more like 12 to 13 <laughs> for the yeah, couple. Of <laughs> that's still that's still a, a respectable number. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, Right now, it seems like the Green Party is the only party that's getting back to me as far as uh, interviews. Okay. So, like, okay, well, I'll interview who's getting back to me on that kind of stuff, so no worries. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, uh, are you going to be able to do uh, other events for the Green Party, or do you think uh, this will be it for the time being? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, I intend to help out where I can, when I can, you know. Um, and uh, I think, you know, they'll have some sort of ally in me, uh, you know, as long as they exist, mm -hmm. unless they turn fascist or something like that. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. uh, but I know there's been a lot of um, uh, internal fighting. Like, um, I, I have, uh, I've been to be the couple that, that uh, have been, you know, a, a lot of other um, political parties will help out the down down ballots a lot. I mean, the was like, say Texas or somebody who's a Republican or like right. on, if it was like you know a Democrat, mm -hmm. but not many have gone down to like Michigan and other places like that to, at the very least, like show up at, you know, very small events right now, but still events nonetheless. Uh, or have even done much interviews with them on Zoom. I think Howie Hawkins has done maybe a couple as mm -hmm. far as, um, oh, I interviewed uh, Justin uh, from Connecticut uh, yesterday and uh, they did a Zoom. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I interviewed him yesterday. Uh, yeah, it's been a very interesting ride so far, at least in my, in, as far as my experience so far goes. Right. So, uh, but what I'm trying to do in regards to this overall channel slash podcast is to be able to interview all the leftists and all the so uh, socialists. Uh, I, right. found out, I found out there was um, someone, a communist, who was uh, going for a U.S. Senate seat in, uh, in Vermont. So I was like, okay. So I, I uh, sent him an email and I haven't heard back yet, but it's been like all, all of an hour or so. But um, that's pretty much my goal is to try to get a uh, uh, the lesser known uh, politicians uh, out there a little more. Yeah, um, well, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I will work with anyone in an effort to uh, advance the movement. Hmm. You know? Uh, I uh, I know there is often a tendency for infighting and uh, um, or dissing, you know, this person or that person or this organization or that for mm -hmm. differences in which side of the bread they butter, yeah. uh, you know, but, um, as far as I'm concerned, all of them are important mm -hmm. in advancing whatever movements we can, yeah. you know, um, so I am, <laughs> I'm open to working with pretty much anyone uh, who is not working to the detriment of the movement. Yeah, uh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, have you been uh, checking up on, um, uh, I was gonna say something else, but I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you have any other projects coming up? Any what? 
projects like any other kind of arts? Well, um, I mean, I have, you know, I have, um, what, right now, I have a series uh, that goes along with this of Black Lives Matter um, mosaics that I did. Uh, I wish I could show them to you, but they went to a gallery uh, on Friday. Cool. And uh, I submitted them to a juried art show mm. uh, there. And they called me on Sunday and said that uh, they won first place. Nice. Uh, okay. what, art, what, what gallery? Uh, it's called Perkins uh, Center for the Arts. It's in Morristown, New Jersey. Mm. Um, it's in this area. It's kind of a pretty big deal. Mm. You know? um, and uh, it, you know, I, I just thought, um, I, I mean, I, I didn't actually necessarily have a good relationship with them in the past. Mm. Uh, we've had some misunderstandings um, in the, about a year ago, but I decided, you know, I, I made these uh, mosaics during, you know, the, the rigid lockdown that we were in. Yeah. And I needed, uh, I, I put them online, you know, because there was no place to show them. Yeah, and this was the first chance I had to actually put it out there and, you know, outside of my house. Yeah. Um, and it won, they won first place. Uh, so um, I'm, you know, I'm happy about that. Uh, the thing that made me happier about it, though, you know, in, in, a, in a sense was that when I put them online, I put them on in a couple of groups, some local groups, uh, some local artists groups. And then uh, a local um, Black Lives Matter of South Jersey mm -hmm. uh, or a uh, Facebook group. And somebody from there contacted me and she knows uh, Brianna Taylor's mother. Oh. Now, um, uh, Tanika Palmer isn't on Facebook, but uh, this woman and Tanika Palmer had, you know, this woman showed the, what I did to Tamika Palmer and they decided they wanted me to do a uh, portrait of Brianna Taylor. Mm. And so I did. And, um, you know, uh, again, now uh, Brianna's mother has it. So, um, but those are the things that make it worth it to me to do. Mm. You know, uh, anything to advance the um again the movement uh advance her cause um i had done an interview on fox news uh fox in philadelphia mm, uh, okay. um because you know one of the reporters actually was in one of the groups i had shown them in mm -hmm. and she uh and um they i wasn't gonna do it because i don't want to exploit um, you know, Brianna Taylor or other people, you know, to push myself. Yeah. But then um, I, you know, I guess Brianna's mom and friends um, decided that I should do it so we could help advance Brianna's case. Yeah. You know, a anything that, uh, any coverage for it was helping advanced her case not that it helped yesterday but uh yeah um you know but w i mean that it's not surprising that that happened yesterday but uh still um the idea was to keep it in the forefront and that's if 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 that's all i can do because i'm often home down sick mm -hmm. uh, if that's how i can use what i have to help um advance uh, whatever movements, whatever causes, whatever. That's what I'll do. Yeah. So. Uh, by the way, I'd like to thank you for being a supporter. Oh. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm, <laughs> but I'm, I'm at the point where, you know, um, we're, we're kind of running low on money. Now, yeah, so. no, I understand, yeah. But, um, yeah, because... Uh, uh, the whole COVID-19 thing has, I mean, we haven't been without income, but it has cut into it. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my husband uh, 
teaches, he still teaches at a couple of uh, colleges and universities nearby, mm. but his course load has been cut. Okay. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of, uh, income has dwindled a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um, uh, it's, well, anyway, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> you say something in there. No, uh, no, that was going to say was uh, 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 your stuff is on Etsy or Etsy. If I, is, is, is that how you pronounce it? Etsy. Etsy. E T S Y. Okay. And uh, now, um, uh, how many people? Website called uh, RobinBrownfieldMosaics.com. Okay. Well, that's nice. There we go. And you're on uh, Twitter as well. I am on Twitter. I go by my name everywhere because. Yeah. I don't see the point in really hiding it. Um, <laughs> you know, I am what I am, and if I, you know, I'm <laughs> deemed a troublemaker, they're not, a fake name's not going to change that anyway. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm Robin Brownfield on Twitter. I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm, though I don't really use that very much, uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have a, a page on Facebook also. Uh, uh, called Robin Brownfield Mosaics uh, online, online gallery or something like that, uh, um, and which the reason I had it to add those extra words online gallery was because right at the beginning of the lockdown, Facebook kicked me off. <laughs> so I, I can't access my original page for my mosaics anymore. I had to create a whole new page, a uh, whole new uh, account and profile, so. Yeah, I find that interesting because uh, I, the same thing that's happened to me, except I, it's, only, it's been when I changed phones. Okay. Uh, I, I, so sometimes I, I, I stick with the same uh, password with everything, because that way I don't have anything to remember except for the password. Right. And a lot of times if I go online, it's a different story than when I would do it on, on my phone. Right. I can't. I can do it on. I can do it on my phone, but I can't necessarily do it on on online. But um, it's the same password, same username. What the heck? Mm -hmm. So now I have to go. To, so I have to redo the whole thing again and refriend everything. I'm going. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So it's all a pain in the butt. <laughs> right. 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 So uh, how many pieces online do you have? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. I haven't counted. Um, I would say i i mean i on etsy i probably have about 10 mm. right now i've been trying to add things on but uh it's very complicated to do that because you've got to measure everything and weigh it and calculate shipping and box sizes and so forth yeah. and for a lot of these things i don't know box sizes mm. it's whatever fits yeah, you know, very much, yeah. have, have some and i might not have a box the right size at the moment so then I have to guess and make up a box size uh, if I want to put it on Etsy. Um, but, uh, um, you know, so I have that. Uh, I have a lot of things I just haven't put up because they're either small um, and probably or I mean, I mean, I have a lot of mirrors, for instance, where I've decorated the frames and so forth. Oh, okay. And I, uh, I will probably gather a lot of those together and put them up soon, but I haven't had a chance to do it. Um, but, uh, you know, those, those I would put up, put on Etsy, you'll see I have the portraits, uh, all sorts of, most of my portraits I have, um, uh, I did Frida Kahlo, uh, AOC, uh, Jane Goodall, Bernie Sanders, um, Ilan Omar, um trying to think of who else I've done. I I I have a lion. I put up uh uh my Black Lives Matter uh mosaics, but I took them off right now because since they're in the gallery, I can't really do anything with them anyway. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't exactly uh sell them, right? If they're in the gallery. Right, right. Yeah. And I'm not actually uh in the gallery, um they're not for sale because I didn't I don't really want any, any, I don't want anybody to, I don't want a private organization that's not 
a movement organization mm -hmm. yeah. benefit from it. And I don't want to profit from it. So I, 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 I'm winning prize money for it, but I'm going to donate it to a couple of organizations that are advancing Black Lives Matter issues. Mm -hmm. you know, um, or, um, and uh, so uh, if I sold them on Etsy, and mm -hmm. I had them up for $650 on there, but if mm -hmm. I sold them on Etsy, the money would have gone to um, uh, a number of different organizations rather than me. Mm, okay. Well, if, if somebody were to ask you what organizations they should uh, donate to, uh, which ones would you prefer? Uh, that's a good question. I'm still really looking into them. Um, I know uh, uh, when I was approached to um, do the portrait of Brianna Taylor, for instance, uh, the Tamika Palmer's friend wanted to pay for it. And I said, I didn't want money for it. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is, they were establishing a foundation um, in Brianna's name, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a scholarship foundation. And I said, donate, to, donate it to that. Mm -hmm. you know? So, so I'm, I, I started making up a list of different organizations and I have to do some um, research too, because some of them are dicey and sketchy and you don't know really where the money's going, but others, you know, uh, have more legitimate you know, uses for it. Yeah. So well, we only have a few more, a few more minutes uh, until I'm guessing that the thing will come up again. You only have like two minutes left. I think I'm on my Zoom on my part. Uh, I, I schedule this for 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, so your stuff is at Etsy, you said? Etsy, E T S Y. Okay, and it's uh, uh, um, Robin uh, uh, Brownfield on there? Right or uh, on there, it's R Brownfield Mosaics. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> I have to see. I think it's uh, either either that or um, that's funny. I don't really keep track of that myself. <laughs> uh, I should I, because I'm not really a business person. That's yeah. What I'm like. <laughs> um, but uh, it's uh, R Brownfield Mosaics on there. Okay. Uh, is there any other uh, places that you would want to? Um, well. I comically say plug. Um, no, no. I mean, I will. Uh, I, I, I do try to sell things from to pay my own bills too. Mm -hmm. But uh, certain things, like um, you know, certain, I, and I will indicate on there if it's up for sale, may be designated to be fundraisers for different organizations. So okay. that's, that's all I can say. Okay, well, that, I mean, that's nice. I mean, that's uh, uh, that on you as far as uh, wanting to give back to the community at large. That's right. just pretty, yeah. I'm, I wish I could do that right now, but I can't. But anyway, uh, thank you for being on tonight. Um, I, I so look I so look forward to, to this uh, interview, and I, I look forward to the next one we have. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't have more to show you. I mean, I have oh, that. Yeah. I have a couple of little things to hear, but uh, most of my... Um, you know, my stuff is out of the house right now. So. Yeah. Uh, what what I will do is uh, post this on my YouTube channel. I will uh, then send it to you, uh, I guess, through email. Um, and uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully I'll have another chance to interview you in another month or so. Uh, see how you're doing and yeah, see how things are going. All right. Thank so, you. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for being on. Uh, for my listeners, uh, 90 cents to support this. You get the full, the full, uh, the full enchilada, as it were. I'm trying to um, uh, kind of edit a little bit on the YouTube so that people have the chance to go here instead of go on my YouTube channel. Uh, but uh, thanks, for, thanks for being on. Uh, let me cut this out here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, will, I will happily uh, talk to you again. Thank you. Have a nice night. <laughs>